Hi guys, Vernie here and welcome to the workshop. If you watch my Strava then you probably know that the latter part of my season was focused on marathon racing and I managed to rack up 60 UCI points uh, this season. Next year I'm planning to do even more marathon races from the beginning of the season because honestly road racing is, I don't know, it's just not my thing. Uh, so I'll stick to marathons and time trials for the summer season and cross obviously in the winter. Uh, and I learned quite a lot of things uh, this season and made, I think, a decent amount of improvement uh, to my mountain bike racing. So because I was racing motocross, uh, then people assume that I'm automatically very good in the downhills. Mm, well, very good comparing to an average person or mountain biker, should I say, but I'm still uh, or at least last year I was lagging behind quite a lot on the technical and also in the fast stuff compared to dedicated uh, mountain bike races. This year I've managed to close the gap uh, or the gap uh, quite a bit but I'm still not in there so I need some work to do and based on this uh, I made a couple of change to my bike setup too. So what I've done, uh, or in one of my races I really suffered uh, from our pump and my arms getting sore uh, on a very very tough and rocky course so I read about it a little bit and I decided to pull my brake lever a little bit closer to horizontal because when you're going down a steep track this enables you to keep your wrist and your fingers are more in line so there's less stress on your forearms and I have to say it helped. Another thing I've done is to bring the contact point or the bite point of the brake closer to the bar which going back to motorbikes is a feeling that I never really liked but again I read about this uh, and I got some advice and I adjusted it this way and it really really helps cut the fatigue in your forearms just because your fingers are not wide open when you have to hold them over your brake lever and close it to the bar so you have a more secure grip less force is needed. Uh, another thing that I will try uh, in the off season to boost the confidence is cut my stem length. I'm, use, I'm going to use the same type of stem. Uh, Richie WCS, the 25 degree angle, because I need the bar to be low, but I wanted to bring it uh, closer to the, to the steer, so this is a 110, I'm going to try a 90, and maybe eventually an 80, and we'll see how that helps. Uh, then in terms of spares, uh, in some races I didn't run spares, and then I started to, because I uh, got pun a puncture, and then I decided that no matter what penalty it gives me, I will always run spares in the marathon race. So the setup I have now is the Samurai plugs. So one of them uh, carries uh, the tire plug, the other plug carries the reamer in case you need to adjust the hole. Uh, then I got this little saddlebag from Specialized, probably not the neatest solution. Probably I could have just taped the things inside here, but that will make them messy and contaminated. This way they are kept clean. It's also waterproof. So it is better in my book. What I have there is two CO2 cartridges, inflator, two Bolito uh, spare tube, uh, and a cut down six mil hex key so I can undo the wheel. I have no multi-tool on there just because I don't really find the need uh, to tighten anything because I check my bike regularly, regularly service it so I had no issues with bolts coming loose, uh, knock on wood or carbon in this case. And then uh, the biggest uh, kind of trial and error was for me were the tires. Now for cross country you get quite light and thin tires but still you have to do 
uh, downhills which are quite technical, quite rocky uh, and at a serious pace if you want to go anywhere near the front so you have to really really consider tire choice now at one point I was using tire pressures that were probably a bit too high around 25 26 psi uh, then I started having problems uh, with, with just general soreness on the bike because all those tiny vibrations were being transferred to my hands to my back etc so that was not a good option uh, then I was going down with tire pressures now MV has a recommendation for these wheels and for the tires of this width of 16 to 21 psi so I kind of stick to the higher portion of that 19 in the front 21 in the rear so far it has been working good uh, in terms of sealant that was also a mistake I was making that I was not using enough sealant uh, once I got a sidewall cut and I only, for some reason I don't know exactly why I tended to run not too much sealant just around 50-60 mil in these wheels and the sealant has sealed the sidewall cut for a time and then five kilometers before the finish uh, it completely lost the air so I had to reinflate it and then it was barely holding anymore so right now I'm running 100 mil front and rear and I guess that's kind of necessary if you want to run tires that are well quite thin not that robust and you want to go fast in rocky stuff so that should be more on the safe side so to sum it up pressures tire choice and sealants are quite crucial uh, these are my rocket runs uh, for training they're quite beaten up but for training still good enough I've seen that people don't really use these tires anymore the top races uh, tend to run the new uh, Racing Ray and Racing Ralph uh, front and rear combo I also have uh, done a race on that but those are my race only fresh tires and I'm really happy with them uh, another change I've done not strictly performance oriented but I've changed from XTR pedals to these look ones uh, if you follow my Instagram then you probably know why but anyway I'm really happy with them the action is very similar although you have a wider contact patch so they feel more like a road pedal reliability has been great uh, they're very easy to engage to so no complaints there bit lighter too than XTR mm. And one of the big changes I've made uh, is to switch over to the uh, Brain damper cartridge in my fork, which I'm very happy about. It's more of a love and hate thing, this Brain suspension, but I'm on the love side, luckily. Front and rear. Um, I've been also thinking uh, about a couple of things. So, the Spanish brand Dorimo makes some super exciting carbon components which could bring uh, the weight of the bike down by around 250 grams according to my calculation which could come in handy but one thing I'm worried about, worried about is that in case I get a tip over or a minor crash where I could still continue I don't know if these super light parts uh, could actually withstand that because with these MV things I know they are made to be sturdy but with those, I don't really know, because you see, if I go over a bar, it's a small low speed crash where I could still continue, but I break my handlebar, stem, or, or seat post, then it's game over, and I just don't know if that's worth it, but I will consider those options as well. Okay, so these are the things that I've changed and learned uh, during the marathon races that I've done. If you want to know more about my bike setups for other disciplines, then don't forget to tune into the channel and subscribe. It's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.